you give me power? Give me something. Man, stop, see if you play. Whoa, 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 guys, what's going on here? You okay? What's going on? Every time I say something to him, he just smiles at me like an idiot. Oh, where's the passion? Where's the rage that he plays with on the field? My client's got it down. You're just not saying the right thing to motivate him, that's all. Enlighten me. Okay, uh, Rich, did you happen to catch what Michael Crabtree tweeted about you earlier today? Crabtree? Hey, we doing this or what, man? That's better, but I need more. Okay, all right, hold on. Um, Aaron, Aaron, can you come over here for a minute, please? Probiotics. Ah! Don't you ever talk about me! I'm the best going in the game! He was talking about you. Crabtree! That's all he has to see He ain't shit! That's it! That is what I'm looking for! Now give me the box score! Starts right now! I don't know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple, C's get degrees. Need a long and appropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you, because I probably am. Power Tower for box score. Hello and welcome to the box score. I'm Brock in Los Angeles at the BS News Desk until the end of the week. They're the Danettes in Milford, Connecticut. We are down one. Fritzy is at the doctor having some sort of medical procedure, I'm sure. Uh, but the big man not in the office today. Dan Patrick was out. And in his stead, Paul Burmeister and Jonathan Vilma. Holly, how'd they do? You know what? A complete thumbs up. Um, you know, filling in for Dan Patrick is intimidating from the fact that you've never done it before. Burmeister's hosted a lot of shows, and they've done a lot of TV work together. But it's, it's different when you're filling in for Dan we are super comfortable here. We know exactly what we're doing every morning, and they don't know what they're doing. So you have about 90 minutes to get them comfortable, which is more than anything. All the little things we do in the morning, we kind of downplay everything. Seton, you can back me up on this. We make everything like, hey, just relax. Here's how you yeah. get into this segment. Seton goes, hey, here's the breaks. 15, this, this. But yeah, everything's very deal. calm, because we don't want them stressed out going into 9.05. Eastern, you want them casual because you can always bump up the energy. And we're not gonna like leave them hanging or any, like anybody who fills in. We're not just gonna leave your ass hanging out in right. la live national radio and TV. You know, we know how to help everybody out. Uh, I was actually surprised at how good they were because um, I'm not really super familiar with either of the media wise mm -hmm. uh, and hosting a show and, and things of that nature. I, I haven't really seen a lot out of Vilma, uh, Jonathan Vilma, in terms of like his analysis uh, and stuff. But I, I thought they were both fantastic. Yeah, really enjoyed it. No, I. Well said. Uh, two thumbs up. It was uh, relaxed, but things got a little tense, uh, Seton, when Paul Burmeister started rearranging the desk. How tense was that? Well, you know, it's really, it's a little bit of self-preservation. Um, it's not as much tense as it is like, ah, oh, man, I don't feel like dealing with this when Dan gets back. We're going to be back. It'll be post-Super Bowl, so we're almost guaranteed to get yelled at for something mm. severely where Dan's going to tell us if we don't like it, he'll just cancel the whole show. And that kind of talk. You, we usually get yelled yeah. at post-Super Bowl. Yes. Um, uh, or usually day one of Super Bowl. Usually, yeah. Oh, we're going to get yelled at there. Yes. And, but then after Super Bowl week is super successful and we crush it, we're going to come back and get a good talking to about how don't take anything for granted. Right, don't put your feet up. It's more like, I just don't feel like dealing with the, uh, hey, who, uh, my pen's here. There's four. There used to be five. <laughs> Anybody know what happened to my pen? I'll tell you, a sneaky move by the Burmeister. Uh, he knows he's doing Monday, Tuesday. Mannix is doing... Thursday, Friday, oh, Mannix will likely catch the blame for the death situation. Very smart. Yes. So he can have at it tomorrow. He can do whatever He's he wants. willy nilly. He's be pushing stuff off. Very nice. Good job on Burmeister Burgermeister, Meister Burger. Uh, Jonathan Vilmo was uh, relaxed, maybe a little too comfortable today, and dropped the F bomb. I promise I'm not going to make you mad. <laughs> you see how you're <laughs> with me. All right. So yeah, we're back. Sure. We're back. You know, I think that was actually the uh, second F-bomb. Uh, I know we didn't bring back the first one. Um, but yeah, I, clearly we made everyone very comfortable here. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a validation of how good of producers we are, uh, that we could just, a couple guys talking at a bar and hanging out. Because you know, what'll happen is when somebody curses, uh, somebody in the room is like, hey, we're back, yes. uh, by the way, just so we could cut off the flow of curse words. Yeah. And then on Twitter, you get like, hey, guys, a little late with that. And they're like, yeah, I know. <laughs> like, we already told everybody that they're back. But then you have to remind them, like, hey, stop cursing. Can guys. I share a super, super, super gross analogy? Sure. When my two-year-old daughter gets too relaxed in the bathtub, well, you know what? Forget it. 
I'm not oh sure. Oh my! It's we call it a code red bath situation. Yeah. This, Brock, I know you've been there. Wow. You can't let people get too relaxed. That's all red. I'm saying. That's an FPP violation. <laughs> uh, See where I'm going? <laughs> not bad. That's not bad. Not bad. Uh, Princey's well, not here. Who'd like it? Yeah. Is it tiny bubbles or does she go full Caddyshack with that? <laughs> Fifteen minutes. One to one fifteen for the caddies. <laughs> we had a full closure. There was a white suit situation. Oh, hazmat? <laughs> hazmat. We've gone hazmat several times. Oh. In fact, we got to the point, it's like an alarm goes off, <laughs> and we know the drill. <laughs> we had the cleaning products handled. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Paulie, you wanted a piece of uh, Jonathan Vilma today, but he said no. Is this the first time you've been denied a beating? I think so. It's interesting because I, I mentioned it to Jonathan. He said no quickly. And he said, no, if I'm not getting paid, I don't hit people. It's like, okay. <laughs> but I explained to him, and he's seen a little bit of the show, but he may not have seen any of the hits I've taken here. And he said he's, he's actually a pretty smart guy because legally there's nothing protecting them if I get injured and sue him. Now, that being said, as a gentleman, I would never sue anybody I asked to hit me. I think that would be the biggest wuss move of all time. But legally, there's nothing to protect Jonathan Vilma if he broke my neck. Yeah, and so he even said, he goes, he goes, I don't care if you sign a waiver. He goes, I don't have a lawyer here. I'm not hitting anybody. You know what's interesting? Smart man. He wasn't a really big guy, but you could right. just tell, man, if he wanted to, if he, it's yeah. like that football yeah. player strike. He could have threw you across the room like a fly. Something in the shoulders of these yeah. guys that they just carry. And also their attitude, like, come on, man. You know, like, <laughs> you're yeah. such a, a peasant, you know, like a little peon. That right. Did you notice that? Did anyone notice? I was like, wow, I thought he might be a little bigger because right. he was a dominant middle linebacker. Very tall. Football. He's listed at 6'1", 230. He's no not way. even close to 6'1". I'd not say, I would say exactly. a good five. He's probably even with you, would yeah, you say? Yeah, he, he was maybe a little taller than me. Yeah. Maybe, maybe six feet. Yeah, maybe, yeah I'd maybe. give him six. I'd give him six. Another thing that was interesting, and I think you liked, uh, he came into the studio today and he had a change of clothes ready. He brought like a dress shirt as if he was going to go on a TV show. And as soon as I walked in, I saw this nice dress shirt and Tom, like, hey, man. I go, you look good with what you have on. You got a, a comfortable sweatsuit. Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah. And I think right off the bat, instead of making him get a, a shirt and tie on, I was like, why would he wear a shirt and tie here? You'd, you'd probably be calling him a nerd after segment one. He had the hoodie, much like <laughs> a Belichick. Mean. One story you guys were talking about was Patriots related, and that was them deflating uh, balls for the AFC title game. McLovin, what sort of punishment does the NFL hand out for uh, something like that? Uh, there's, the report is that they will lose draft picks in the future, so there's if, no impact. If. if it was true, uh, they'd lose draft picks. There's no impact on the Super Bowl. So I say deflate those balls. Why not? And I know that because we turn around here in the man cave every day. We kind of have like our own little mini camp here. Uh, a deflated ball is 7,000 times easier to throw. Well, there's no doubt about it. It's, it's a, when I saw this story this morning, I was like, oh, man. Because it, it's it's interesting story, but not a real story. How is it not a real story, though? It's, uh, well, they're I know investigating I think, it. I think it's a story because it's the Patriots. Uh, yeah. I think my gut tells me that it's something that most teams do and almost never nobody gets caught for it, but for some reason because it's the Patriots and maybe they operate in a gray area most of the time, yeah. that it's like, well, they do that. And oh, so you're saying when people, they wouldn't have been that. The investigation wouldn't have started. I'll bet you a million dollars the Colts had their balls sort of tinkered with too. I, I think every But how do you know it's not does. that the, how do you know that it's not the Patriots out there tinkering with rules? You think they're the only person who one they don't actually check the balls most of the time. They right. do a little bit here and there. So you think they're the only people who Aaron Rodgers doesn't like a little bit of a softer ball. Oh, you are such a Patriots apologist. How did this Andy happen? Andy Dalton's deflating balls left and right. Yeah, I think he needs to deflate more balls, right. but I can't Andy believe Dalton, yeah, I think Andy Dalton He might be the one air. guy Dude, who's like, yeah, doing it honestly. <laughs> if, yeah. if the Patriots lose, are you going to come in here for a seat and say, Tommy can't throw the ball and catch the ball? Are you basically the Giselle of the Dan Patrick shows that? <laughs> I would have to so is there any, that role. Do you remember Spygate, or is there nothing wrong that the Patriots oh, no, can do? Oh, no, Spygate is clearly wrong. Yeah. No, I mean... Technically. It, it was clearly wrong that they got ratted out. <laughs> By Mangini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, these alleged tapes that have been destroyed that we don't even know if they really exist. I saw you uh, on Twitter yesterday, by the way, and I, I you were angry. You're like, how could Phil Sims not see that, that was pass interference? All right, I'm sorry, that was embarrassing. They, go, they went through a four and out by uh, the Patriots, okay? Yeah. And they're like, okay, right there, yeah, that's a good play. Nance and Sims are watching it, and you're like, how is it a good play? They got dudes in like an arm bar, yeah. and they're like, yeah, it's, it's too bad, it's good coverage there and they went through three plays right in a row and it's like yeah it looks you were throwing the word wicked into your tweets you've become a boston <laughs> fan yeah well yeah i was wicked cock potty and oh uh, <laughs> uh, uh, mclovin and Seton, you uh, put that uh, softer ball thing to the test and then tried to play box score producer hey this ball is super deflated 
We're still not throwing I don't enough. think we own a pump. <laughs> yeah, it's, I still don't have any ability to throw a football. Even when it's... One hit a catch. Well, you see that? That was spun. It's flat out <laughs> spinning, <laughs> these things. I got it. I'm gonna go with a little bit more of a sidearm delivery type situation happening. Whoa! <laughs> 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 I feel like we're gonna see that on the box score scene. Can you, sure you grab so. that door, please? <laughs> was that an unintended nut shot? That was a completely unintended. That ball was really slippery. Am I wrong? I mean, I'm actually not making an excuse, but I was trying to you get know, the one I, in. You were a little confident. You can see you're sort of one hand yeah. in uh, the, the way, going around the back. And the, wall the box score makes a big deal out of like the dramatic nut shot, where it's like a. Dr Trust me, that slow roller if that, that kind of grazes. that was slow motion, it would have looked probably more. I gotta tell you, too. those are the ones that hurt. It was a grazer. It was a serious grazing situation, and it really that hurt as bad as any flinch ball shot yeah, I've wow. ever had. Wish I would have saw it live. Yeah. Hmm. See, do you think you can outproduce the producers of the box score? <laughs> loaded question. It's a loaded question. Oh dear. Enough said. All right, well, stick around. The guys relive, <laughs> relive their first trip to the Super Bowl with TV, not just TV, direct TV. Paulie opened up his scrapbook and said, I want to catch a pass from Joe Montana. Go down there a little bit, I but don't, don't drop, drop pass it. Don't, uh -oh. don't just drop it. Out. <laughs> oh, there you go. It's that amazing that Montana could even see Polly with my bright pink fluorescent shorts. <laughs> Making dreams come true. <laughs> Just give me a second. Thank you, Ron. Great day. Super day. You I think Joe enjoyed sure. himself as well. I thought you would have. Polly wasn't joking. It was emotional. Welcome back to Box Score. That was uh, what can be described as one of many classic clips from your trip to the Super Bowl. Polly, where does that rank on your all-time list? Oh, let's see. My first kid being born, I would put slightly ahead of that. My second kid being born, I mean, she's a great kid. She's a good-looking oh, kid and everything. But, cruel. but I mean, Joe Montana. It's not like, you know, it's just an average quarterback. You know, a little behind the, no behind the scenes on that, a little known fact is that Polly actually has to catch a pass from Joe Montana. Oh, yeah. And uh, Dan gave him Montana instead. Huge fan Huge. of Joe Montana. Great character actor. Great shorts there by McLovin. Uh, 2010 was your guys' first yeah. trip to the Super Bowl with the TV crew. In tow, uh, Seton, how about your favorite uh, moment from that trip? Miami, uh, my favorite moment was probably the weather report uh, oh, that we yeah. did. Yeah, that was great. Uh, which was a lot of fun. That, that first day that we were there, it was like pouring rain, and there was, I don't know, a hurricane coming up or something, which is great when you're doing a live TV At the radio beach. show from the beach. <laughs> Um, and that was sort of, that was the open Monday morning that we did for the cold open and sort of set the tone for having a new sort of thematic or, a, you know, cinema, whatever type open yeah. uh, each day. We, all of a sudden we were producing new opens that weren't just in a normal cold open, but more movie themed to it, um, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. McLovin, you did, now, I, it was in Miami that you did the John Belushi, I gave my yeah. love. Yeah, it was Miami, broke the guitar, no one thought I could do it on one take, yeah. used every ounce of strength I did, and I did the uh, John Belushi that because, awesome. yeah, Seed was making it me was jealous. There was one take, what I remember about that is, oh, our, one of our producers said to you, hey, we have one guitar here, cut loose, you know, do it or don't, and yeah. uh, you went you went for it, and it was really good. quoting Foreigner there, one guitar. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all that, man. Yeah. <laughs> Well, McLovin, you had one <laughs> shot to do it, <laughs> and uh, let's take a look at you doing it. That had no end. I gave up. Sorry. <laughs> and that's not, just to be clear, and I'm, I'm being serious, that's not a breakaway guitar. It wasn't messed with in any way. I didn't know they made breakaway guitars. If I had known this, I would have requested right. it. Like, Belushi's <laughs> yeah. was, you know, fixed up. I was so nervous I was going to let down the entire crew. Yeah. It could have been the most embarrassing thing that ever happened. But uh, that was pretty much movie magic. That was great. It was, uh, with the strength of the honky-tonk, man. Uh, stay with us. A true test of writing wit and comedic skill is upon us.
What should the headline be post Patriots Colts right now? Headline should be Patriots dominate. Indy needs to figure out how they can get to the Patriots level if they want to get to the Super Bowl. That should be the headline. Yeah, that. Welcome back to the box score. That is Jonathan Vilma uh, doing a mock headline for the uh, Patriots win. Uh, here's what it would look like if it was actually put to paper. McLovin, he was a little long-winded during that, uh, like he did during the <laughs> Battle Royale. Did you give him some tips? Uh. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I think the editor of the paper did a great job getting the exact right font size yeah. there. I, I think it's fine. Is that Helvetica? Yeah. It's fine. Oh, it's it's got to be Helvetica. Or like, go it looks like somebody transcribed uh, Fritzy actually talking. No, I like it. It's good. Sounds New Roman. Sounds Please. Sarah. All right, well, let's see if McLovin's headlines will be long again. Let's go to war! Our headline, Battle Royale. Our first headline, um, the Seahawks and Patriots <laughs> both advance and will meet in Super Bowl 49. Uh, McLovin, start us off. This is the worst headline I've ever written. Uh, please bear with me. Sleepless in Seattle? Uh, More like Boston TD party. <laughs> that isn't the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Crowd has no taste, Polly. Now these are a tribute to Todd Fritz, so these are all in the Todd Fritz tone vernacular. Noted. Can they repeat? There's a chancellor. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. That's a dandy one, Seton. Oh boy. Phoenix Tea Party. True Patriots bringing conservative offense to the desert. Conservative, yeah. Ooh. Second headline. A lot of layers. Lot of layers. <laughs> a lot of layers. Like Broncos party. hire Gary Kubiak Ohio. as their new head coach. McLovin, take it away. Kubiakism. New Broncos coach hopes to paint offensive masterpiece worthy of Picasso in Denver. Kubiakism. Cubism, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Seton. Kubiak. Broncos fans sick to stomach over new hire. <laughs> what? <laughs> Polly. Stop hating, Andrew. Again, remember, this is as Fritzy. Broncos asks, Broncos asks John Fox. So <laughs> <laughs> I can't even do this one. Oh. Oh. Hey, I just had a hernia surgery. Broncos asks John Fox to leave them to the promised land. <laughs> yeah. To leave them. To leave them. To leave them. To leave them. Oh. Sorry about that, Fritzy. Akeeb. Uh, third headline, Lindsey Vaughn ties career record for World Cup wins with victory in Italy. Polly, have at it. Again, as Fritzy. What's your World Cup size? Vaughn was in Italy and won again. World Cup size. Seton. Lindsey Vaughn, more like Winsey Vaughn. Yeah. <laughs> authority, Larry Beal. More layers. McLovin. Von Trapp. Lindsay takes advantage of beautiful Italian Alps to coax sound of proposal out of Tiger. Question mark. <laughs> Edelweiss. A lot of layers. Edelweiss. Bless our homeland forever. Angry crowd. Our fourth and final headline. Brock joins the Danettes for the first time on screen together mm. as the box score heads to the Super Bowl. Seton, what do you got? Mount Everett? Nepal Pabst overly excited about Brock's screen time, question mark? Nepal Pabst? <laughs> Mount Everett. Mount Everett. McLovin. Nepal Pabst. <laughs> so, your name is Brock Everett, B-E. So, B-S goes live with B-E. Is that B-O? <laughs> Oh, uh, Polly. Brock blocked. Box score host to dominate Glendale single scene. <laughs> All right, before I give out the belt, uh, the belt out, I have added one here. It is simply zoom out. Zoom out. The mock headline championship belt goes to Polly. Not you. Uh, Brock, I just want to say I, I would share this with Fritzy, but he had nothing to do with this whatsoever. Brock, Do, 
Don't go away. We recap the championship week and prepare for the final showdown in the BSFNC. Welcome back to the box score. Uh, yesterday, two teams battled for the right to go to Super Bowl 49. But more importantly than that, a battle has waged, a rage between Los Angeles and Milford, between myself and the Danettes. It's the highly contested. The Danette Football Night in America Challenge. All right, we put a lot on the table for this uh, week's competition. We asked you who would win each game, and then we asked you who would have more rushing yards between Marshawn Lynch and Eddie Lacy, and who would have more yardage between T.Y. Hilton and uh, Rob Gronkowski. Paulie, you asked for, uh, asked for the extra bonus four points if you went four for four. Do you think anyone pulled that off? Um, no, I, I wish, I hope someone does, but I can't remember everyone's picks, no. Well, Paulie, uh, you were just being coy because you and McLovin went four for four on the challenge, earning a whopping Whoa. eight points. And with now, that- Now, Brock, let me ask you a question yes. about that. I, I just want to get your ruling. Do you remember who picked first with their four picks, myself or McLovin? Any record of that? We'd have to go back and look at the tapes on that. Okay, because I, I just want to, I don't want to file a protest, but I want to file a, a bro protest, man. A bro test. Because I went four for four, and I sh I'm proud of myself. But I think you picked my exact things to make sure that you didn't lose the contest, instead of giving what you honestly thought for the game picks. Okay, so you picked the two favorites in both games, right. and you picked the most productive postseason running back to do well, and T.Y. Hilton, who averages about 130 yards a game. And, then, and, and then, you want credit for those innovative picks. I absolutely do. I absolutely do. I, I went great. <laughs> you went chalk, and I went followed you right down that path. Would you, if you would have picked first, do you think you would have gotten the same picks? I absolutely, well, everybody would have picked. The, you, there was no spread, and you said they gave us the favorites. More so importantly, did Fritzy go over for? Uh, I, uh, did he? Uh, Fritzy did not go over for, but our leaderboard looks like this with a little uh, leapfrog here. McLovin has moved into first with 21. Oh. Holly and I are tied for second with 19. Seaton right behind us with 16. <laughs> and Fritzy is pulling up the caboose with uh, eight points. <laughs> Don't worry. want to pull up his caboose today. Yeah, we are not done yet, though. We have one more round leading into our trophy ceremony uh, set, Dude, uh, to take place in Glendale, Arizona. Uh, McLovin, are you going to put that trophy on your desk should you win? Yeah, but I have a feeling you're going to up the points big time last week with Paulie setting that rule, four extra points. I feel like it's still open to everybody except Fritzy next week. Well, I, well, unless we pull out the, like, Paul Pabs patent dude, hey, how about this one's worth 20 points? Yeah. So you can get back into it. Speaking of that, let's do this, Broccoli. Let's make it uh, this Friday's uh, box score or Thursday. Maybe we'll do it Thursday. Pick the, the, uh, the MVP of the Pro Bowl game. Yeah. And you get two points. Oh, snap. And you get no points if you don't get them. We will think about that is what I'm hearing. All right, well, no. I think, um, by the way, can I just add in one more thing, Brock? Yeah. I think that I should get extra points uh, considering that the graphics guys continue to spell my name wrong. I think that should be worth it. Do they really? Uh, in the, our crack graphics guys. Not to call you out on national TV, but. I think I should get like five to six points considering that my name is O-C-O-N-N-O-R, not E-R. Oh, come cool, on. So, I mean, uh, the graphics oh, guys, that's a victory. That, that's like get them getting it right. And by the way, just so the producers, can we just help the producers out? Don't ask us who's going to win the AFC and the NFC in the Pro Bowl because they don't split up the teams that way anymore. <laughs> so please, just get your act together out there. Shots all over the box score. All right, uh, no Fritzy. So Polly, please tell us who's on tomorrow. Um, the lovely and talented Al Michaels. Uh, he is a father of 11. Um, he wow. owns four cars. Um, he is a homeowner. He is a registered... Uh, do you believe in birth control? Al Michaels, I'm sure. <laughs> Al Michaels. Registered us. He's a notary public, I think. I'm not going to take notary. anything. Oh. Thank you, gentlemen, and thanks for watching the box score. Uh, we will be back tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on Audience Channel 239, uh, or catch some extra content available on the podcast on iTunes or podcast1.com. I don't know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple. C's get degrees. Need a long, inappropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you, because I probably am. Hey! Thanks for watching the box score. Holy cow!